if you're wondering about the NEO stock price action, check this out. This is a chart and I've removed the price. I'm going to put it back in in a minute because there's something you need to see. But this is a chart for FTDs, fails to deliver, failure to delivers. These are these represent times when they couldn't find shares that were supposed to be out there. So one thing that sometimes happens is a manipulative short, a company that wants to suppress or manipulate or mess with stock price will create these fake shares out of thin air and they'll use them to push down or suppress stock price action. Now, hang on though. There is this one area on this chart. Now, this is the entire history of NEO stock with the FTDs being shown. And these white lines represent millions and millions of shares that couldn't be located on different days. This is not reported real time. We cannot access this data. It is not included in the short interest. It is weeks, if not months, delayed in some cases. So this is the one time, the one time frame where for consecutive months, for a little while, the fails to deliver were kind of in check, maybe even at a reasonable rate. <clears throat> Are you ready now for me to put the price back in? Do you see the correlation? Fails to deliver up, stock price down. The one time, this one time frame where the fails to deliver were low and look at what the stock price did. Now, it is noteworthy, and I did a video late in 2021. This is important. And I talked about a suspicious character called Citadel. This company started shorting NEO. At that time, NEO was trading over $40. And since then, we've got well, quite a bit of negativity in the stock price. We do have sentiment that's gone negative, but we also have the fail to deliver picking up again. Look at this. They're back up after this nice quiet point where the stock price ran. So <clears throat> I would highly encourage people to research, dig into things like this, especially if you're concerned about and stressing over short-term stock price action, especially for a company that's not yet profitable. I'm not any kind of advisor. I don't want to be that, but I do research and I want to understand things. So why not take five or 10 hours and dig into things like this? Find somebody like Wes Christian, who's a high level attorney who is so good at these cases. When he takes on these cases, the shorts don't even go to court against it. They don't even want to go to court against this guy. He's one of the guys I found who I've studied and listened to. And it's been very enlightening, very, very educational. And that's one of the reasons that I just don't trip on the short-term stock price action. Knowing and recognizing that shorts, especially when there's a suspicious one involved, and then seeing the stock price action, it just doesn't shock me. But that's me. And you know what? Let's get to the comments now. <clears throat> I will say one other thing. This may be a pivotal time for some people with NEO. A lot of retail investors getting frustrated, a lot of them. And I think we'll see it in the comments here. For me, I think the pivotal point is specifically relative to the premium brand of NEO and the vehicles in the second half of 2023. Can NEO do the ramp that they've wanted to do, that they've talked about doing? And then I'm a little skeptical. I don't think they'll do quite the ramp that they're talking about doing. I hope they prove me wrong. I'm going to give them till the end of the year, and then we'll talk about it after that. But let's get into the comments. First comment, Ted says, Jai Hinduja, and I'm not sure if this is uh, directed to someone who was also in the comment section or not, but I'm just going to go to the comment itself. We need to see profits rather than range. And I will say this, Ted, I agree. Profits matter. Companies that are profitable, uh, companies, once they get to profitability, excuse me, and I'm sorry, I, full disclosure, it's 1.30 in the morning as I record this, but I need to get it done and out. So I'm staying up so that I can get it out uh, in the morning. <clears throat> and so forgive me if I'm a little off of the game. I do have the water with me trying to keep my voice in check, but we'll see how it goes. So back to the profitability. Tesla, when it became profitable, ran. 
And I haven't looked at what the FTD situation was for Tesla for those years leading up to it becoming profitable. But I wonder if there wouldn't be a common recurring theme for people who do want to research and look into things like that. Companies that are growth companies, that are growth stocks, that are highly shorted perhaps, maybe even with lots of FTDs before they hit profitability, at which point maybe they take off. Neo's already taken off and run even before profitability, but I am fundamental in the way that I've looked at this company. Even a couple of years ago, I talked about three major growth phases. We're still in the first one. It's market awareness. Until the brand is globally known and Neo is not yet globally known, we're still in that phase, market awareness. The second phase is profitability, and that's a huge one. That's really important. And delivery ramp is probably going to be our big indicator in the second half of 2023 for what we're looking at time frame wise with profitability. But I'm with you, Ted. I agree. Profits matter. And I'm looking forward to them. But I also realize the size and the potential market for Neo globally is much bigger than I thought it was early on. And recognizing that, acknowledging that for me means I will be more patient because they need more time to grow to be the behemoth I think they can be. That's just my view, though. BL says, stop finding reason for Neo. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that means. BL, does that mean, is that something about, uh, are you saying I'm making excuses for me, Neo, maybe? I Sometimes I get that from people. <clears throat> but it's kind of the last point that I made. If the company can get to be the size that I think they can with this massive global footprint, the question is, how long do they need to get there? And am I OK waiting if they could be even bigger than I thought? I mean, it's a no brainer for me. Absolutely. So I understand and have no problem with people saying I make excuses or that I'm not objective or whatever. Maybe my lens is just a little different. Maybe the way I'm looking at things is a little more um, bigger picture and longer term. And maybe. What other people are scared of with an innovative, disruptive company is what I have embraced. I'm just saying it's possible. David Chavez says, pure speculative, inflated guidance from Neo execs. They struck when Neo was a darling to Wall Street. Best case scenario would be a buyout from its competitors. I don't know if that's a question for me or if you're just thinking out loud, uh, David, but I'll, I'll address it here in a sec. Uh, he also says they haven't been transparent with news or guidance with shareholders from the jump. Uh, I will say, uh, you know, I, it's pretty bold to, to call them liars. Um, I do think that they've missed a couple of times, especially on delivery ramp and things like that. Frankly, that's one of the reasons I'm skeptical uh, that they'll get to the numbers they are suggesting they'll get to this year. I hope they prove me wrong. But as far as a buyout, I think that's really unlikely. Uh, the the co-founders, and you know what, they're also kind of, they've got their partnership strategically with a lot of state-owned companies in China. I don't see a buyout happening. I don't think that's realistic. I do think Neo gets the profitability. I don't know if it's 2024. Delivery ramp, ramp like I said, is going to tell us a lot. Second half of 2023 uh, with regard to that. <clears throat> but I think even if I think even if they don't get to profitability in 2024, I think 2025 is still doable because let's not forget sub brands they'll be coming out with. Uh, and I just, they, they, this company's got a lot more than, than what folks are, are probably recognizing, in my opinion. Momentum Swing says, oh, we can't get out of this rut. Tesla production exploded with Model 3 and furthermore with Model Y. What are the Europe numbers like? Europe numbers are hard to find, but... Neo has even said themselves, they're not focused on the numbers in Europe. They're focused on the users. And that's the consistent theme from Neo. Uh, but it's, it, it is not easy to get those numbers. Some people share some of it on Twitter. Uh, as far as the, the Tesla and, and their explosion with the Model 3 and then the Model Y, you know, Marcel says it well. Uh, Neo and Tesla are not the same companies. They're very different. Neo has, in my opinion, some people won't like this, um, but it's also a much earlier stage for Neo, so we don't know. Neo, I think, has a larger market potential globally than Tesla. And if I'm right about that, how long for the company to get to that point? That's sort of the way I'm looking at it. <clears throat> but Again, that's my my view and my lens. I'm embracing what a lot of people 
are, are disliking or afraid of. And so that, you know, that's, I'm contrarian's contrarian, I guess. Peter K., I'm pretty sure, Peter, that you have been saying the same thing next month, $5 is what you're saying here. And I'm pretty sure I've seen you with this same comment calling for $5 for, has it been half a year? Have you been calling for $5 for that long? I'm, I'm just, and maybe I'm dreaming it. It is late. Uh, next month, $5, Peter says, more houses, Neo and burning money, president to be fired. Uh, do you mean uh, Chin Lee Hong, the president or William Lee, the CEO? Maybe you want them both fired. They're both co-founders. Um, and I don't know. I, I know I know people are getting frustrated with management. They're frustrated with Neo. They want this to hurry up and, and be a profitable company and for them to be delivering a bajillion cars a month. <laughs> and, and hey, I can't wait to see the delivery ramp too. And I am skeptical. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, I don't think they're going to get to the massive number they want. I'll probably talk more about that later though. So let's keep it moving. Samuel Romo with two uh, comments in a row. First one says, with these great numbers from Neo, I say it's game over for them. Uh, ET7 not selling, ET5 not selling. Who knows if the ES6 will sell? This company's uh, had a great run, but due to poor management, they have uh, run the demand for their cars to the ground. So Samuel's not feeling bullish at the moment. Uh, also says the CVID case is going back up in China. That is bad news for Neo. Marcel actually talked about that that's non-news, fake news, not true, uh, and even showed a picture was it shenzhen that he showed a, a picture in the subway area i think uh anyway i think the the <laughs> that part is not news or, or not accurate but you know what check with marcel or somebody who's who's gonna have more insight and more up-to-date information on that uh as far as the numbers and the selling you know what i said a while back june is the month i'm kind of looking forward to for an uptick on delivery numbers. And, you know, I, I was kind of running numbers today, but you know what? I'm going to table that. And I'm talking about for the whole year and for the last roughly seven months of the year, because I'll probably get a chance to share that later. So I won't talk about it yet. Um, the ET7, let's wait and see if the government has a large order for ET7s for their vehicles. That would probably be the appropriate vehicle for government officials to use. And I, won't be surprised if we see that the ET five is the, I don't have the April and May numbers because I haven't seen the April comparison. The ET five has been the best selling pure electric vehicle in the 300,000 above, uh, R and B. I have a playlist that I created so we could track that. So I, I understand that some people are not happy, but that doesn't mean that they're looking at all the right data points. I'm just going to throw that out there. And again, that's why I'm tracking that stuff. WMA 79351 says that doesn't sound right. ES6 probably sold that many in one day. And I think you're right. They probably have a lot bigger sales. I don't know when the deliveries will actually take place. And I don't know when they'll be booked. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. I think again, that's why I'd said June is the month I'm looking forward to. May, only a few days of deliveries with the ES6. I, my thought was a full month of seeing the ES6 will give us an indicator of whether production in the ramp is really going to happen uh, in the second half of the year. That's going to be kind of the indicator month setting up for July and, and into the end of the year, hopefully a strong uh, uh, delivery finish to the year. So Neo Electric Vehicles says, I feel like we dead. I mean, no, we're not, we're not, we're not dead. You know, it's, it's uh, the numbers. I didn't really have an expectation for, for overall numbers for May, and we haven't seen them yet, but I did not expect a big number. And I am probably right in saying I don't expect a big number, but the, I don't know, I, I'll be kind of listening in on June 9th to see if they do any guidance revision for the year. I still think, and I thought before that they were too uh, <laughs> too optimistic with suggesting a 250,000 number. That, that would be an incredible ramp. Uh, and I hope they prove me wrong. I, I don't know. But again, bigger picture. In fact, the company now has so much more going for it. And I'm not just talking about the vehicles. I'm talking about overall. There's so much more that this company can do. The, the energy play alone has just become massive. 
but I don't expect it to be recognized yet. I think it will take more time. So that's my view. And it's not going to be popular with people because, I mean, I'm from the U.S. And, and, you know, people love fast food here, you know, and it's become a global thing. So people want it now. They don't want to wait. They want to be able to drive through and get it now. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't have that lens. I, I, I was forced to learn another way. I didn't want to, but I was forced. So it's a whole other story I won't get into here. Anthony says, got in at 770, selling at nine or 10 by earnings. What if it doesn't go up, Anthony? What do you do? I'm curious. I'm always curious. And as an investor, I like to ask myself questions so that I have clarity on, on what I'm going to do, especially if things don't go the way that I want them to. And in particular, in a short term time frame. So the question is, if let's say Neil goes down and doesn't doesn't get to that point by earnings, what do you do? Are you holding? Are you adding? Are you still going to sell? What are you doing? I'm always curious to hear what other people are thinking and doing and if they've even asked themselves these questions. Albert Lee says, Neo is a joke. Only clowns believe in such a laughing stock. Lee Otto will be the winner. Empty promises is all you will get. And so we've got Albert Lee thinking that Lee Otto and Neo are competitors. Respectfully, disagree big time, like times 10. Uh, but as far as the only clowns believe in such a laughing stock, I have to apologize. I would put on my clown hat if I had one. That's all I got to say. Ernesto, what's up? Ernesto says, looks like big pre-orders if the reports are to be believed. If so, now let's see if production capacity can match the orders. 30,000 orders in three days has been reported. You know what, Ernesto? I wouldn't be surprised if you're right. And if those orders, if those pre-orders are that good, and if we won't see those numbers uh, come through or big numbers come through, but I don't think we'll see them until June. And the question is, how much can they get out? I really would like to see a surprise uh, to the upside on the delivery numbers from June, but we got to wait till July 1st for that, right? So it's going to be a minute. Um, and until then, people will be saying all kinds of stuff. I'm sure I already see it. Uh, we got Ahmed, we got Peter, we got Billy. Um, everybody's, everybody's got an opinion, right? Uh, <laughs> Andrew Hubbard says, the delivery numbers are shocking. Let's not hide the fact we should be hitting much bigger numbers by now. We were all excited about the ET7, then the ET5, and they just don't sell. The quality is there to see, but no one wants these cars for some reason. June is massive now, absolute massive. If we don't hit 4,000 next week, no excuses at all. Uh, I love Neo, but without numbers, why would shorts ever stop shorting the stock? We need numbers, not phones or wine. We just need numbers. I'm long and strong, but I will be critical when needed. No worries, Andrew. Uh, and you got three people agreeing with you there. I do think that... Um, and again, you know, bigger picture overview is the way I'm looking at it. So I agree with you that June is a is a big month. I think it's, and that's kind of, you know, the title pivotal. I, I think it sets up for the last part of the year, which should be the strength for Neo. And it is when they did better last year as well. You know, uh, cyclically and, and seasonally, I think it just sets up well. We also have the China 6B regulations, which I keep talking about, but not a lot of other people are talking about it. And we don't know how that's going to impact things. We also don't know what kind of government orders NEO has, if they're going to be you know, coming out with a lot of ET7 deliveries for the government officials um, or other vehicles, perhaps. I think the ET7, the sedans um, seem like the, the most likely business car for government officials, but let's wait and see. And you know, if they were waiting on the upgrade on the ET7, that would make sense. Um, the ET5 is still performing well. Uh, I mentioned it before. Uh, and the the variety of models, I do believe is a strength, but probably not in the short term. Some people aren't going to see that or like that in the short term because they want to see big numbers. And it's a lot easier to do, say, for example, what Liato or Tesla or some of these other companies with just a limited number of models are able to do because they can focus more on their specific models. Neo being more premium, more luxury is wanting to do things different and focus more on the user first and prioritize them. That's the business model and they haven't tried to hide it. Kind of like the CEO has talked about 2030 is where he wants to be one of the top uh, automakers in the world. So, and you know, the reality is it's about tech and auto now. It's not just automakers. If you want to be there in 2030, you got to have the tech play too. 
which is, I believe, underrated for Neil, but we're still waiting to see some of that. Uh, we've got Tell666999 says, funny with Neo, release a model, doesn't do as well as expected, then releases another model, hoping it will do better, then so on and so on. Neo has a fundamental issue. It can't meet expectations yet. Ooh. See, I like that at the end. It makes me think you're sort of seeing something positive down the road. And <clears throat> I see Billy in the I hope uh, Billy does his own comment because I'm I'm... There are too many comments. I'm too far behind. This is going to be a long video and it is already the middle of the night. So I'm just going to try and get through the main comments and the, the comments to the comments. Uh, I'll just kind of leave them alone. Shen, uh, Chen Jen, what's up? Uh, says waiting for comments, response video, long term. Let's go. Three people liked it. I appreciate it. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, it's long term for real. Um, and that doesn't mean 2075, I hope. <laughs> Emiliano, what's up? The goal is to beat Lexus 200,000 as possible. Good reminder. And that's actually where I'm I'm thinking the numbers. I'll be okay. I'll actually be happy if Neo gets to that number for the year, 200,000 roughly. Uh, I don't expect him to get to the numbers they were suggesting. I'm kind of laughing over here. I'm not, I'm not laughing at Neo. I'm just like, it's a little optimistic. Hopefully they prove me wrong, but the 200,000 number would be great. I think that would be, especially with how slowly the year has started. And Neo did warn us that the beginning of the year would be tough and it would be slow. So let's see what happens. Uh oh, Tyler Brandt says nothing new. Neo lied and five people agreed. Oh man, see, this is sentiment right here. This is it, folks. This is why I do the comments response videos so we can tap into this and see what's really going on with the retail investors. Um, Tyler, I would love to hear from you. Um, what, uh, give me three things that they've lied about and, or the three that uh, bother you the most that you think that Neo or management has lied about. Because again, I want, I want to dig a little deeper. I want to, uh, I'm always curious to get other people's thoughts and what their, um, their view and perspective and lenses. Cap Sarge, what's up? Uh, says waiting on June 9th to see what insights I can gain, but long-term I am not worried, but short-term I am disappointed. And I think that's a fair assessment. It makes sense. Um, June 9th, of course, the earnings. I'm hoping to cover it live. And I, I really don't know. Is Neo going to tell us anything? Here's maybe the bigger question. If they tell us something, are we going to have the people saying, oh, they're lying anyway, not believing them? And you know what? One more question. Was this how it was with Elon Musk? Because that dude is still lying about stuff and it doesn't seem to bother people. That's, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, but <laughs> but let's just see what happens. Uh, and and. It, people feel free to respond to that. I'm, I'm really curious about that. Was Elon always like that? And did people ever not like that? Charles D what's up says it's time for Neo to turn around. I bought more today. Neo, maybe that was a signal. Maybe you buying turned it. Uh, <laughs> let's see what happens. Uh, either way, I, and, and I'd said it before, I'll say it again. I talked about the, the shorts at the beginning that fails to deliver and we can't get real time data on that, but sentiment, is well, you're seeing it in the comment section. Pretty rough. It's been pretty rough for a while. Uh, shorts have been in control, and we've got not a crazy high big May delivery number. So that's an opportunity for shorts probably to mess with things if they are. And then we've got earnings where we kind of already know it's not going to be anything crazy to the you know positive optimistic side to write home about. So that also might not help. Maybe another opportunity for shorts. I'm just Let's see, see what happens. Abel, what's up? Says somehow things are not working out or are not working on the production line or selling side. Neo investing a lot on R&D and swap stations and Neo houses and reserve capital building down. What is the CFO calculating is becoming a mystery to me. Uh, I will say this, Abel. And if you look at, I was really surprised pleasantly when I looked at the end of year comparison, the last two years and saw the balance sheet because Neo is investing a lot. But that's actually a good thing in my mind, thinking they can take over more market globally in different areas. And that actually means there's more upside for the company in my mind. But they also manage their money really well. Their cash burn, as some people like to call it, really wasn't. They, they really did an impressive job with the balance sheet from year to year. Captain Sarge, what's up? He's here again. It says numbers not great, but we knew that week to week and month to month this year or even next year might not be impressive, but it will be someday. 
everyone compares Liotta to Neo. It's not even a comparison. Thank you. Oh, and somebody else even talking about Billy, you need to come through and do your own comment instead of respond to everyone else's so I can actually read yours. Uh, shout out. Uh, Carlin says, I'm adding shares. Now is the best time to build. Uh, sounds like Carlin's got that long-term view, bigger picture overview and opportunity buyer. Samuel Romo says, uh, awesome numbers once again. I think you're being sarcastic, Samuel. Uh, definitely not buying the red day for Neo, waiting for the $6 or lower. I, I bet, Samuel, that you're going to have another uh, price call out, and it might even be lower than this. Let's see in the comment section. Jason McDunn says, the super pumping continues. Wait, was that a shot at me? Hold on. For my insurance registration video? what? Uh, Jason, holler at me. Let me know. What did I say in that video that was pumping? Because I thought it was a pretty observational video. I did show the FTDs, uh, which I actually showed again, but... Hopefully I made it even more clear that there's some questionable things going on, but you know what? Six people agreed. So maybe I said something that was uh, at least perceived to be pumping. I don't know. Uh, uh, okay. Well, it continues. Jason says you have been dead wrong on Neo for over two years. Did you hear, do you remember when I talked about Citadel getting involved in Neo back in late 2021? Now, did I know it was going to go like it has? No, absolutely not. I don't know if anyone knew that. Maybe Citadel knew. Oh, shots fired. Uh, sorry, back to the barrage. Shots being fired at me. Uh, no worries, Jason. Uh, I appreciate the honesty. When do you start holding them accountable? This management lies and or is delusional. They waste money on stupid things. Okay, this is completely uh, speculative because we don't know. Uh, whether they're stupid. IDE versus SME. Uh, this is a business, the structure of a business, the bigger companies with the larger global footprint potential, like a NEO, will typically go negative and possibly go negative for longer before they go positive and profitable. But once they become profitable, they can make the most money. That is not from me. That is from a senior lecturer who is a professor at MIT and he may know what he's talking about. And, and so that's kind of the way I've looked at Neo. It's one of the reasons I picked this company, but I agree with everyone who's stuck on sh like short-term stock price action. If that is the only thing you're looking at. And by the way, especially if you're not doing research into FTDs and things like that, I understand why you're frustrated, but that's, and I don't know if that's you, Jason, I'm talking in general. Um, uh, sorry, back to your comment though. The, so that's why the stupid things made me talk about the um, IDE, Innovative Driven Enterprise, which are the largest companies, uh, the Tesla type companies, uh, companies that are, you know, Apple, um, NVIDIA. Anyway, uh, they waste money on stupid things rather than focusing on their core business of selling cars. Actually, have the co-founders ever actually said that selling cars is the core of their business? I think the core of their business is the user. And I think they've made that clear, but I understand why a lot of people are stuck on only the cars. I actually think the energy play is the best aspect. And I didn't know that was going to be the case a couple years ago, but as I'm seeing things and looking at what Neo is doing, that looks like it has the most upside and it's massive. It's huge. But that's also why I'm not more hung up and frustrated with the shorter term delivery numbers, because I don't think that they need to dominate the premium space. Although, if you remember the video I dropped, and sorry, I'm spending a lot of time on this, but but I'm like, man, a lot of shots fired, but um, but it's about you know research and data, and and that's what I'm focused on. So let me get back to it. I did a video. I don't know if you've seen it. If I remember, I will try and link it here in April, which was the worst month of sales for Neo, uh, unless May ends up being worse, and then you know, we'll see. Uh, there were three models that Neo had that were in the top 13 sellers in the highest price, like 400,000 RMB and above range in the premium segment. So the pure EVs, Neo's doing great, but people want to do the comparison to Liato or other companies that Neo really isn't competing with. So I, I think that's the problem. Uh, but I don't mind. You can call me super pumper and you can say I've been dead wrong and ignore the times that have been right, even if it was only two times. Man. 
Anyway, no worries. Uh, Jeff Sanchez says the CEO is definitely not doing well. I'll give the CEO a couple months to get back on track or hit the sell and take the loss uh, by Tesla or Apple. Man, Jeff, you got to do whatever works for you, bud. Uh, always. You know what? Investors, it's your money, your decision, whatever you do. Um, and five people like that. So I, here's what I'm wondering. Uh, any of the five people or you, Jeff, are y'all considering the fact that the CEO and founder of the company has been long-term, has remained long-term with his vision and, and what he's trying to do. And he has said 2030 is kind of his goal. So I just, I, I think there's a disconnect for people when people are like, yeah, I, I'm giving them, you know, this many months or whatever. And I'm like, this guy's talking about, you know, seven years from now. Uh, I just feel like there's a big disconnect or people just, they want what they want. And maybe they didn't look at the longer term and say, well, you know, short term, it's done this. So that means it'll do this. Um, I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe we'll see another short squeeze by the end of 2023. You know, Neo ran in nine, 10 months. If the FTDs go down, right, we might we might see Neo go to 100. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I, I just, I don't want to count on that. Uh, you know, that hasn't been the way that I've looked at it. But I'm also long term and I don't get caught up in the day to day other than from a research and studying and trying to learn and just trying to get smart. I got a lot of work ahead. Uh, Ahmed says this company makes every investor poor. What a garbage, what a liar. CEO William Lee guidance was 250,000 and not even close to a hundred K. I agree on the last point for sure. Um, the rest of it is pretty speculative. Um, and I still know investors who bought it like the $2 level. So there's, they're still doing okay. Um, I wasn't one of them. I didn't even know about Neo uh, back then, but it was a little later than that when I heard about him. But anyway, uh, you do, you know, the guidance of 250,000, I said it before, I don't think they're going to get it. Uh, question is this, Ahmed, for you, if Neo gets to 200,000 deliveries in the year, we'd be happy with that or not. <clears throat> and uh, what if they don't get to 200,000, but the stock price rebounds and goes back up to, I don't know, the forties, we'd be happy then. And, and that's, I'm always curious about that because I'm just like, how much of this is stock price and people just getting worn out from maybe the shorts playing their games. But that kind of makes sense as to why they do it, right? Just saying. Gabby and I, what's up? Says, well, as a, it is a waiting game now. Maybe we can get some words from management on June 9th to calm the nerves down. If I were Neo, I would get my friends living in the USA and around the world to buy as many Neo shares at these low prices. And later this year, use them to kill the shorts. July will tell us if we're going the right direction. Yeah, I think July is an important month for on the delivery side. <clears throat> but again, that's just one data point. Uh, and... I almost, do I want the Neo management? I mean, what makes sense business-wise, do you think? It, does it make sense that we really want management to make retail investors who may be short-sighted and not look at the long-term prospects of the company when they are long-term and have made it very clear they're long-term? Do they really want to take the time to cater to some of those investors when it's probably not going to matter? I don't know. I don't think that's an effective or efficient use of time. But but that's just my take. Uh, and so that's why I'm, I'm I, I hope they say some things. But even if they do, I think we're going to hear a lot of the same people. Oh, they're liars. They're liars. You know, and that sort of thing. And I just time is the ultimate reveal. You know, uh, like uh, Jason was kind enough to say, you know, I've been wrong about everything for two years, uh, which I respectfully disagree with, because I think at least twice I was right about something. Uh, but <laughs> but again, you know, long term, if. If Neo ends up at $100 a share, you know, a year after they're profitable, then I wonder who's going to remember this. You know, I just wonder. But that's not being stuck in the short term and trying to look at the overview. And that's what I try to do. And I don't know if I'm right. Time will tell. Peter Klausner, what's up? Says, great points again on Neo, Aaron. Citadel is the plague of Neo. <laughs> Maybe that's what, maybe I talked about Citadel and that upset people. I don't know why it would. If, if they have dug into it, Again, the research, but, but that's, and I'll say this, anyone I've talked to who has actually done deep dive, a lot of research into Neo is bullish on the long-term of the company. And, and that's, that's it. I'm leaving it at that. There are a lot of people, YouTubers included, who I've seen who don't do research and it's painfully apparent. And so they can have whatever opinion they want, you know, but I prefer to dig and study. Oh, we've got 22 who have agreed with Kong. 
Kong Chen. I, wait, I haven't read this comment yet, but I'm going to predict. I don't think I've ever seen Kong Chen put a positive comment. So I have a feeling based on behavioral patterns, this might be negative. Let's see. I remember when Neo say ET7 is the game changer, then ET5 is the game changer, and now ES6 is the game changer. They change nothing. Whoa, boy. So tough. But do I have to call, do I have to respond? I don't really, I mean, I've already talked about ET7. If government has some huge order for the sedans that are going to be provided to the government, does that change anything for the ET7? Does anyone remember? I do have the playlist for the sedans from when the ET7 first came out, and it was ranked up there even before the ET5 came out. The ET5 is still ranking as the top pure EV on that chart. And the ES6 has been the best selling model for Neo. And we're moving on. Pedro, what's up? Says Neo is constantly failing investors. Oof, this sentiment, 14 people. I mean, I'm what I feel like is we've got a lot of short term or or and and I have to say it. There are traders and there are investors, and the traders do the short term thing and Go make that money if you can make that money. No worries. I, I'm for people winning, you know, however you're investing. But if you're short term on your time frame, especially with a company that's not profitable, especially if you're not looking into FTDs and doing the research into things like that and seeing sort of the mechanics and the things happening behind the scenes, if there is widespread manipulation in the stock market and you're not aware of it, then... I mean, that's kind of a good starting point for research, right? I would think, but that's just me. And I'm an old fashioned guy who I like research. Um, so I, it's a speculative statement. He was constantly failing investors. Uh, for me, we're still in the first major growth phase. We haven't gotten to profitability and knowing what I do and having studied into and spending hours into the research on the FTDs until Neo is profitable. And as long as Citadel is anywhere sniffing around Neo, I'm just going to be watching and sitting back going, yeah, nothing's going to surprise me on stock price. And if possibly even when we see a squeeze, kind of like we probably saw once before, it just won't surprise me. But, you know, again, short term sentiment is what it is. So we got a lot of people agreeing with that, you know, mentality. And some people won't like that I'm being honest here and, and calling things like I see them. But some people also probably weren't locked up for over seven years and came back and saw how much things can change in seven years. I've seen it. So my lens is a little unique. Uh, JC says, ouch, I thought a bunch of ES6s were going out early. Aaron, we definitely have demand issues. Too expensive versus a very good Lee Auto. <laughs> we got another Lee Auto comparison. Without a government contract, I think we could be in big trouble. And there are eight people agreeing with that. JC, I had said before, I'll say it again. I feel like it's really repetitive, but I feel like I'm doing this a lot. That's okay. I'll, I'll keep repeating myself. May was not the month where I expected a big delivery number. I said it before, the first full month, which is June, is the one that will give us an indication on the ES6. Because a few days of deliveries, that's not, that's, I mean, no. That's not enough of a data point for me. Uh, and so I'm not going to go into the whole fear mongering. Uh, and yeah, the too expensive thing. I, I just made the point before. I'll say it again. Three models in the top 13 within the month of April, which was a bad month for Neo, right? Low month on the delivery side. Still placed three models in the top 13 in the 400,000 RMB and above. So they're doing fine in the luxury segment, but the luxury segment is slower to pivot than the rest of it. Again, data points and research that I just don't know. I feel like I say the same thing over and over though. Man, what time is it? It's after 2 a.m. No wonder. It's past my bedtime. So sorry if I'm getting grumpy, folks, but I'm going to keep it moving. Billy, you finally did your own comment. Yes. Okay. Too expensive to compete with the Model Y and Liato. <laughs> I just made the point about Neo placing three in the top 13 uh, for April, and that was a low delivery month. But 
11 people agreed, so I must be wrong. So we'll keep it moving. I can't argue with 12 people. It's too many. Kevin Jimenez, what's up, buddy? Says, won't even do 150,000 end of year. Forget about 250,000. Wait, is that your prediction? Uh, uh, under, over under, you're going under 150,000? Um, those numbers are overinflated, and we have to blame management at this point for their poopy guidance. He didn't say poopy. I, I inserted that. Ooh, 17 people agree. All right, this is time. It's time for me to talk about. I was running numbers in my head today. Let's say that we get 10,000 for June on deliveries. And then let's say we don't get a new record for the rest of the year, but the last six months we get what, 15,000, let's say, on average. Well, that's 15 times six, which would be 90,000, right? Plus the 10,000 from June would be 100,000 just for the last uh, seven months of the year. <clears throat> I think that that might at least get the over on 150. I don't know. I haven't run the numbers exactly. It was the ballpark guesstimate. But I was just thinking about that today. I'm like, I wonder, let's say this plays out. What does that look like? Uh, and, and I don't know. I'm. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> Rune says, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> oh, man. Rune, six people uh, agree. <laughs> the, of course, uh, bankruptcy for Neo is not something I've been concerned about uh, because if you know you have it, you might look at the balance sheet for the last couple of years um, and what Neo did, even with massive expansion and uh, infrastructure and investment, still managing the books pretty well. <clears throat> Samir says, horrible disappointment. Uh, six people agreed. Samir, I'm trying to remember. Have you ever put a positive comment? I can't remember one, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and thank you in advance. I'm gonna keep it moving because I've been told I haven't been wrong, uh, right in two years. So I'm probably wrong. Manny's fishing adventures. Uh, ah, let's go with the celebratory. Um, I never know what that is, but you know what? It's cool. It's an emoji and we're going with it. I appreciate you, Manny. Uh, GMZ, this is another negative Nelly, I think. Um, <laughs> 20,000 deliveries in 2023. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was laughing too hard. 20,000 deliveries in 2023. Here's a better question, counter question. Will Neo deliver 20,000 in one month in 2023? And if you think they will, what month do you think they'll do it in? See, I'm turning this whole thing around. I'm giving y'all questions. What's up now? Let's go. It's the middle of the night. This is what's happening. All right. It's need caffeine. No, I need sleep. <clears throat> That's all right. We're going to keep it moving. Satoshi, what's up? Says it looks like Neo is being segmented with Lee Otto. Thank you. Somebody else talking about it. <laughs> Despite one being EV and the other hybrid. Ah, I just, I want to pause and say thank you. Thank you for that. And the next comparison for Neo at 20% are the premium ICE vehicles. You know what? That's Yeah, people just make the presumption without doing the research. I even created the playlist so people could look at it. They don't look at it. It's okay. It's no worries. That's why I'm here. I'll keep nerding out and being told I'm wrong. Uh, it's not at all in competition with Tesla or BYD. Very fascinated to see what happens if ICE regulations come in. That's that China 6B regulations that analysts... These are the people following the whole market, whatever they're supposed to be the, in the no crowd. And they didn't think the China 6B regulations were going to be a big deal. But then we had almost 99% of companies lobby and ask them to do an extension. And a lot of them were talking about how they're worried about going out of business. I'm just saying research for the win, bud. Let's go. Satoshi says 29,700 pre-orders for ES6 in 72 hours. 6,600 confirmed orders for ES6 in the first three days. Wait, where's the confirmation? I didn't see that. Uh, let me uh, drop it. Come back and talk to me. Let's see it. Because uh, I, I haven't seen that. I don't think Neo will tell us, even if, you know, even if they have that. I don't think they'll do that. They just don't. <clears throat> Tom Joe says, I don't agree with your thought. Uh, which one, Tom? Talk to me. Come back and talk to me. I'm not sure which one. That was from my Neo secret to 200,000 deliveries in 2023. Uh, was it where I said maybe the government contracts are going to help? Um, or maybe the China 6B regulations? I think I was trying to connect those dots because I'm like, those two things might come like fall in line really nicely together. 
with the government wanting to put forth uh, face is what they say. It's like image. And since the China 6P regulations make it, you know, basically more ESG friendly. Uh, and that's what China's going to in the future. And that's also two years ago, they announced that they're not going to be basically the, the broker is the way I look at it, um, who usually hooked up the Audi vehicles with the government. They're not going with Audi. They're going with Neo. So it would make sense um, that there's a contract or maybe a number of contracts. And that's maybe what we're going to see. And maybe Neo knows that. And that's why they're still so you know optimistic about their numbers. I, I still don't know if they'll deliver enough. But Tom, talk to me. What? Did I get it right? Any of that? None of it? Am I wrong again? Momentum Swing says, is Neo caught up with orders or do they have a backlog? How much of a backlog? Here's what I saw from CNAV Post. They were talking about the ES6. They actually took the time frame for deliveries off, which could mean that all these people saying that every vehicle for Neo is trash and they're no good is true. Or it could mean that there are so many, there's so much demand for ES6 that they actually need to focus on getting all the orders filled and they may not have time frames. So I don't know. Um, it seems like the latter is more likely if I'm right, maybe knock on wood. Ken, what's up? Says all I know, the stock market is manipulated. Agreed. Neo stock will rise only when the big boys come in and push it up. Remember when the casino was open, Neo was pushed up to the sixties, more of a trend investor. <laughs> oh, Ken, that's good stuff. I hope, Ken, I hope you watch the beginning of this video and that you comment on it uh, with your thoughts on the FTDs. And what I think looks like a painfully obvious correlation between FTDs and uh, stock price. But I'll also say, also say this, during that time frame when Neo ran, there was an average of over 100 million shares for Neo traded every single day, like for, for months like that. And so, you know, that's also one of the things volume can make a difference. And here's the crazy thing. If the volume's really low for Neo, but there are still millions and millions of shares that are magically appearing and disappearing, like, just come on, man. You know, anybody who doubts that stuff. But it's not just Neo. It's a lot of companies. Anyway, it's all business model. A lot of, a lot of companies making money off that short and stuff. Uh, Mike Wu says, to zero loss every year. Um, <laughs> and that was to my video, Neo stock short or long term. What do you think? So Mike Wu is not bullish on Neo. I don't think that's what I'm getting. Red Edwards says, can Neo ship cars via train from China to Europe? Good question. Is this, is the Silk Road in full effect? Is that an option? That's a fair question. And I'm not sure. I actually have a book about that, but I haven't looked at it recently. So I'll try to get back to you, Red, on that. Fair question. Um, oh, Ted, you did this before. Jai Henduja. I don't know what that means. Uh, I need to look it up. I don't even know what language it is. Anyway, sorry, I'm talking to myself. Now it's the middle of the night. Woo! Let me get a drink. It's water, I promise. A Neo must create a cheaper brand for people not able to pay for premium branded goods. This from Ted. You know, must create. Yeah, they have two sub brands coming. Uh, and that's the thing. Uh, you know, it's funny. I don't really even talk about them. But let's say that Neo only delivers maybe 150,000 vehicles in 2023. And then in 2024, they come out with a sub brand. How's that going to do? What if that is the thing that takes them to profitability if they're not able to get there with just the premium vehicles? I, I'm just saying it's an interesting thought. There's just so much more that this company's doing. It's all good. <clears throat> All right. Bill is warning me. I appreciate the warning, Bill. He says, okay, you're not going to like this. I am a Neo stockholder since 2020. Oh, wait, I wish I knew, Bill. It, when did you buy in 2020? Because if you bought early in the year, it was probably in the $2 range. And if you bought late in the year, it was probably, I don't know, above 40, right? Uh, anyway, uh, Neo is only going to reach 200,000 cars when they get their factory. What fact? You mean Neo Park? Neo Park is finished. The first phase is finished. They have two more phases, but the first phase is finished. So I'm not sure if that's what you're talking about. They also have the, the partnership with JAC on the other one. So talk to me, Bill. Come back and let me know what factory are you talking about. Uh, I believe that is the third quarter of this year. I'm assuming the end of quarter. I read someplace Neo was losing $20,000 on each car. It sells. Bill, I got to ask you where you're getting your information, man. Um, 
I'm ho he says, I'm hoping when they get their own factory, they can improve. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid you're watching some YouTubers who are doing less research than meet Kevin. Oh, did I say that out? I said it out loud. I'm gonna go with it too. Uh, sorry, back to your comment. I don't know if that number is true. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, oof, I wish you could unwatch whoever you were watching, Bill. I'm sorry. It's, it's the middle of the night or I probably wouldn't be so blunt um, and direct, but okay. Um, but there is a world slowdown coming up. If China goes to war and see, I, just polite, just quick point. China was locked down the last three years. They're opening up. So by default, they're going to grow relative to a lot of the rest of the world, if that makes sense, especially the US. We're, oh, I'm more nervous about us and our real estate market. Oh, don't get me started on that. Sorry, sorry. All right, back to your comment. If China goes to, uh oh, there's the W war, uh, word, war. Uh, no one is going to be buying any Chinese, including Neil. I like the car. I like what Leah's doing. Um, if China and the US go to war, you are, uh, your stock and my stock will be worthless. I hope that does not happen. Me too, Bill. I'm with you. Uh, what I think is it is a real possibility. I hope not. Uh, and I, I will say this. And, and when it's been brought up before in candid conversation, I tell people if the U.S. ends up in a war uh, with China, which I, I hope won't happen. I hope we never see a war in our lifetime um, here in the U.S. But if that would happen, I will be a lot less concerned about the stock market or stock prices than the war. Um, any war that the U S would be involved in, but I hope that won't happen. Knock on wood. Say a prayer for that. Uh, Sangar says, OMG, I have been thinking about this news since January. Even I searched how many cars China officials use. So this is me talking about the Neo secret to 200,000 deliveries in 2023. And if maybe there's a big government contract that we haven't heard about yet, uh, back to the comment, if they get uh, the order this year, it would be 300,000 easily for 2023. If you remember a couple of days ago, Bloomberg asked Neo if you become profitable by 2024. And the guy said, we are very confident to become profitable end of year 2023. It means something is going on. We would be lucky if this happens. I love your comment here. Uh, I love that you were thinking about this early on in the year. I've talked about the China 6B stuff a couple of times, uh, but I waited to, to tie in the, the government stuff, especially with the ET7 update not being released because that makes sense as the government official car uh, or at least for a lot of them <clears throat> but i here's the thing though saying i gotta ask you do you think neo can get the production up even if they have that order that's the thing we don't know although neo talked about doing double shifts back in i think 2021 was it that long ago i know in 2022 they talked about it but they never actually did them so if they're positioning to do that and they do the double shifts and they have that demand, then you're right. They could surprise us all. And I will happily say that I was wrong. If Neil gets to that 250,000 number for deliveries for the year, I'll be, I think a lot of people will be happy except the people who sold. Ernesto says, I hope you are right. My brother, man, I, I don't know. I just, it was some dots I wanted to put out there in case it comes to fruition, you know, and, and that's the thing I'm apparently I'm wrong a lot. So I should probably do fewer uh, predictions and, and more observations and more uh, research nerding out. That's something I think I'm decent at. Joe, what's up? Says reports that the ES6 averaged 90 pre-orders per store in the first 72 hours times 330 stores. Yeah, I know we're hearing some good stuff and I just, I won't be surprised if that ES6 uh, I mean, William Lee had said the number kind of guesstimate that they were talking about ET5, ES6, and ET5 Touring, those three could make up about 20,000 uh, uh, units per month. But hey, you know what? Let's just get back to 10,000 a month, right? Let's start there. Uh, Charles D says, wait, did I miss one? No, okay. Uh, Charles D says, I've been saying this for a while. Neo has a large order on the books. The government will be ahead of the ball, especially with the regulations coming out of China. For 6B is a game changer. And the 6B, again, I, you know, I don't see a lot of folks or other channels or any places talking about it. And that's one of the reasons I'm kind of like, this, this is going to be an interesting second half of the year because the analysts were wrong. The companies were freaking out about it. And so let's see what happens. 
Neo San Francisco says, no wonder Audi is so upset. China is kicking them to the corner. Go, Neo. I laughed when I saw that comment. I saw that comment come through and I, I chuckled to myself. Uh, Jeff, what's up, man? Uh, it's, uh, Peter Barker, what's up? Says, I did mention this a while back about Neo replacing the A6. And, and yeah, you guys are right. I mean, you know what? I love it. I, we've got some... People go deep in this community on the research. Some people really go deep and some can't seem to stop looking at the stock price and are very reactive to it. Uh, Mr. Seelin uh, F85 says such news would have been good. It would be delightful to my ears. Yeah, I hope I hope we get that surprise. Uh, and um, I don't know, government, lots of vehicles. Maybe it's combination. You know, the EC7 is kind of a under under the radar, I think, too. That EC7 uh, is is one of the more expensive vehicles, but it seems like it's really well liked. Um, let's see. It was one of the three that made that top 13 list, by the way, in the the lowly month of April deliveries for Neo. Uh, still made the 400,000 to 500,000 RMB uh, premium pure EV list. No, maybe that was the overall list. Oh, I can't remember now. Anyway. Made the list. That's what matters. James Davenport says, okay, the government buys 200,000 cars. What happens next year? The government is not going to buy 200,000 cars. They need to make a $35,000 car that the public can afford. The average citizen in China cannot afford a Neo card. That is our biggest problem. I'm also hearing sales in Europe are not even happening at all. Hardly maybe 100 a month. Um, okay, there's two pieces to this. Two sub brands are on the way, James, from Neo. And uh, as far as the China market, the premium market is the slowest to pivot. Most of the sales are going to, at least in the sedan, which I've got the playlist, check it out if you want. The sedan sales are going to the six ICE um, models that Audi, it's basically two models from Audi, two models from BMW, two models from Mercedes. Those are the six getting most of the sedan sales and they're all ICE vehicles. So all of those sales and it's usually 50,000 a month or more are going to some EV company in the future or any EV company in the future. And so that's why I'm tracking this because the, the premium segment is moving slower than the more affordable ones, but the more affordable ones, bigger volume, and that's catching people's attention. Um, and James says, um, <laughs> we'll keep it moving because I just got your other comment. JC says, this is the only way they get to they get that 250,000 this year. And that is if there's a big government order, but even so they still have to get deliveries up. Uh, I mean, production and then deliveries to get it done. Right. I mean, even if they had the order, I'm just saying, uh, BL says partnership here, investing there, coming out with new models, high quality, high tech battery swap. All is meaningless. If Neo can't sell cars and make profit, good strategy, but bad execution. Maybe it's a management issue. Um, I think I've addressed a lot of this already, at least with my view. And that is as an IDE Neo with a bigger market potential globally than I ever thought they had when I first was researching them. And so do I hope to see the, the vehicle deliveries ramp? Of course. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I think that's the key to profitability faster for Neo. Um, but I don't even think it's going to be the biggest moneymaker for Neo long-term. And, and that's kind of the difference is I, I'm not looking at this as only a, a car company. Uh, I'm looking at it as a whole lot more, um, but that's my view. And, and time will tell whether I'm right or wrong. Albert Lergier says, how many total cars has Neo sold in Europe, please? And I don't know the numbers. I would probably look for some of the people on Twitter. There's some really good people who are, are sharing some data there in some of those countries where they're delivering. Um, and some of them have really good insights as to what is or isn't being well received or liked or kind of the sentiment even within the countries, the awareness, all that. So uh, they would be better sources of information than me on that. Captain Sarge says, I think there uh, definitely there is some government contract involved for uh half to either way i'm in till 75 dollars or 2030 whatever comes first see that if you have that lens that 2030 lens isn't it interesting how that can shift things because then you're not going oh it's at you know seven or eight or ten or you know wherever you know you're not stuck in the short-term time frame and that's just the difference of of you know trading versus investing i think is is the longer term is just 
and it's you know it's Warren Buffett's way. It's it's not as popular now, but he's been crushing it for decades, and it's almost like it makes sense, right? Um, but of course, the company has to get there, so it's baby steps. Stephen Lau says, I think Mr. Lee has uh, aware that number of delivery is very material, which will be affecting the share price directly. That's the reason why the budget car is produced to fight BYD. So the sub brand, uh, if both Neo and BYD cars are the same price, definitely I will choose uh, Firefly or Alps because I can use the battery swap station. That's another reason why Mr. Lee keeps building and upgrading the battery swap stations in order to reduce the waiting time. Uh, another long-term viewed investor here. Uh, I have confidence that Neo will be successful and become number one, the best selling EV car in the world. Wow, that's that's bold, but I like it. And it's not outside of the realm of possibility if you figure both sub brands in. Uh, 13 people liked that. Mm, okay, I, I like that. That's good stuff, Steven. Appreciate you. I'm not, listen, I don't even like want to comment. I'm just like, yeah, good, good points. Great, you know, well thought out. Um, and, and you're right. I have made that comment before about, BYD doing such a great job of, of getting vehicles out volume wise, but Neo and, and interestingly enough, uh, BYD's high end car is selling pretty well. So that makes me even more curious how well Neo sub brands will sell because Neo is positioned and known now getting known in China as a premium or luxury brand. So I think you're right that the Firefly and Alps are really going to be in high demand. So that is going to be uh, if we don't see delivery ramp in 2023 for the premium vehicles, then that is where those come into play for sure. Kong Chen says Tesla grew, BYD grew, Li Auto and et cetera grew, Neo didn't grew. In another word, they shrink, they deliver less and make less profit. Somehow they will thrive to be number one. <laughs> they also have the sexiest car in the world that don't sell well. Comparing it to the ugly car like Tesla or BYD or Li Auto, they sell like hotcakes, just some food for thought. I I just am trying to remember, Kong, if you have ever said anything positive about Neo. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. That's all I got. SSJJ005 says, can anyone explain to me why Neo is doing really bad this year? No demand or supply is bad. Well, it depends. Are you talking? Yeah, and Gabby and I addressed the the fundamental the retooling NT 2.0 platform. Um, if you're talking stock price, I think I covered it kind of at the beginning. At least one thing to watch with respect to the stock price. <clears throat> Problem is we can't track it real time. So, uh, but as far as yeah, retooling an NT 2.0 platform and Neo Management did tell us. I mean, this this was not a shock. They said the beginning of the year would be slower. Also, I think they knew that with the China 6B regulations coming into effect in the second half of the year, that the first half of the year would see some of the craziness with discounts from car manufacturers, especially on the ICE side, getting desperate and trying to get sales and just trying to get inventory out, uh, which again, you know, a lot of people aren't talking about it, but it's there. Uh, SSJJ005 also says, is it just me or I think EC7 is the best looking car out there? Nine people agreed. And a lot of people uh, are in agreement with that. I've seen a lot of people who really do like that car. And you know, it came out early and it is one of the more expensive models. And I, you know, a shout out. Um, oh, it's uh, Lily something has a channel and she did an EC7 review and I haven't been over to watch it and I have been wanting to, but I mean, here I am in the middle of the night, it's 2.30 AM and I'm recording this. So uh, maybe tomorrow I'll have time. I don't know. I, I'll try and remember. Gabby and I says, Aaron, I thought about this some time ago. Talk about the government hookup possibly for the NEO uh, partnership. NEO is in good partnership with the China government. So it is obvious to me if after July 1st, they would take NEO or maybe some BYD cars and not Tesla or any European models go NEO. I think it's, I think it makes sense, right? Is it a prediction? Uh, predicting the time frame is tough, but it would make sense. There's a lot that makes sense with this. And so that's why I want to bring it up. I, I like trying to connect dots and, um, I'm going to be wrong sometimes. Of course, I don't know if I'm right on this, trying to, you know, speculate a little bit, but, uh, but there is some logic to it, which I, I try to keep in play. Uh, Kelowna says, I hope you are right. Since without government involvement, no way sales will reach 200,000 plus. 
Neil will thrive or simply fade away. This is not a profitable entity and they have conveyed no info in regard to how they will turn things around. I think there are a few ways they can get to profitability. Uh, I and w- One was referenced by Stephen a little bit ago. The sub brands could get them there. Uh, the power swap, the energy play is not going to be recognized for a while for the value that it holds, but it has huge upside. The tech, Neo hasn't come out with Neo autonomous driving. They've got investments in things that are just now coming out, like semi-solid state battery. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot more to come. This is a company that is still at a very early stage. And some people don't like me saying it maybe, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. And Trod Campbell says, great, relevant video. Thanks, buddy. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping through. Always, always good to see you uh, in the comment section. And I hope, you know, I hope I'm right on it. We'll see. <clears throat> kind of speculate a bit. You know, it, again, you know, the logic in it, the points were made, the, the dots are out there. Let's see if they connect. Sorry, trying to keep my voice together <clears throat> until I can get through this. The rest of these. Frankie James says, what do you think is going to happen to Lee auto numbers after July 1st? Because Lee isn't fully EVs. Well, Lee did come out with, um, yep, there it is. I think Lee auto is working on a full electric version. I believe they uh, announced it or showcased it at the, was it the Shanghai auto show? Their first EV. And they had said that they had a plan to transition over. And I was wondering how that would go. Uh, I thought that they did a great job of positioning and it's, it's showing out and I'm wondering how the brand is now being uh, accepted. And so maybe their full electric will go over. I, you know what? I got to say it though, because whenever I think about buying electric, I mean, totally electric. I think, why would you not buy a Neo where you have the option to swap out the battery? You're not stuck with a battery that's going to die on you and completely tank the value of your vehicle. I just, Neo is, Really way ahead on that. Really smart on that, I think. Uh, Martin says, that's pretty insightful. You never know. But I think there would have been rumors about this. I have never heard of anything. Fingers crossed. That's about all that is left to do with Neo. Oh, Martin's upset. I, I think um, I think Neo would absolutely not want to jeopardize anchoring the government and their maybe wrath by letting a rumor like that leak. I uh, also... I do not think that the government would make anything about it. Uh, it, So the folks who probably know are are that broker uh, who I talked about, I call him a broker, kind of the the middleman entity in Beijing. Uh, And they probably have known for a while, whatever the situation was or is. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, second half of 2023 could be wild, hopefully in a good way. CJFM25 says, it is kind of crazy to really stop and think. Let's say by end of year 2023, Neo hits their CFO 185,000 target he had for end of 2022 before all the mishaps. Beginning of 2023 till end of May, the deliveries will probably total somewhere around 45,000 vehicles, which will give May an 8,000 vehicle delivery number since April had 6,500. Again, who knows? Given that number for the next seven months, To even hit the 185 target, they would have to deliver 20,000 vehicles per month average starting June. And I do not assume June will have that sort of number. So from July onward, probably 21,000 at least, again, just to hit the 2022 CFO target put in place early January 2022. Then new target of 250,000 would mean from July onward, they would have to hit 30,000. Time will for sure tell. And I am just hoping to at least hit the last year CFO target, which will show a 20,000 delivery per month, which would actually be very attractive numbers to raise the stock price or market cap by double what it is now, at least. That is an interesting perspective. And the 185 is also, I'm going to file that away. That's now my secondary. If Neo doesn't get to 200,000, do they get to 185? And bigger picture, you know, what does that mean? Well, how close are they to profitability? How much, you know, are they, how much has the lithium cost dropping helped? How much can they ramp the deliveries? You know, they're, they're good questions. They're, they're good. There's a lot still to be figured out. D's says good video and a very likely conclusion. Well spotted. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope knock on wood that I 
got something right for once. Somebody write it down if I did, uh, but we got to wait. River says one of the bearish things about Neo is their cash burn. Neo house, battery swap stations burn cash. Once they grow and need more charging stations, they that burn will grow as well. Hopefully they offer the Neo house to clients for a subscription in the future. I got back in Neo on Friday under eight bucks. Back in 2020, I got in at 17, uh, uh, wrote it to 63 and got out at 34. Um, so you made money. I hope you made money. Um, <laughs> ben, I see your comment. So it's like the Apple stores burning cash or their own iOS. And again, you know, there's a time when innovative, disruptive companies are not recognized, are not appreciated and are disliked because they're different. Does that mean they're always wrong? No, sometimes they're very profitable. We'll just have to wait and see. You see, Dro, uh, <laughs> what the, is that a wink or a smile? I can't tell. Anyway, I appreciate the emoji. Uh, Pedro says, even so, sales in Europe are residual and demand in China is not good. And that's what will make Neo grow. And people keep talking demand, but if Neo hasn't been able to produce the vehicles, we don't even know. And so again, that's the second half of the year. We'll know more, not what people want to hear, but you know, it's, it's as an investor, it's not about my feelings or my emotion. It's about what I'm seeing and have I mapped out and structured enough time and have I missed on something with the company or not? And if I haven't missed, if there's simply a shift in time frame, then what does that look like? And have I, you know, structured for that as an investor. Those are the kinds of things I, I think about and look at. <clears throat> Standa says, I remember CFO's confidence last year, about 185,000 plus. Anyways, hope for the best. And Ahmed says, yes, true. He never filled, filled his promise. Bogus CEO. People mad. People mad at Neo management. I'm telling you, whew, it's tough. But uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't really respond. Standa, I hope you're right. Uh, and you know what? Maybe, what do you think? Uh, 185 this year? Maybe, maybe they were just a year off. Maybe he meant 2023. <laughs> uh, Douglas says, do you think the Chinese people are confused since all the 2.0 cars are rolling out and they think ET5 is rolling out as well on 2.0, even though it already is? No, I think they know. And I, um, I wish that I had seen the April numbers for the sedans so that I could update that playlist, but I haven't seen them yet. If, or when I see them, I will update it. Same with May. Um, but the ET5 is selling well, relatively speaking. It is still, at least the last data that we had, it was the top pure EV um, in its sedan uh, price range. So that for me, that's good. Uh, Josh says, yes, they need to invest, but they also need to meet demand first and foremost. I got in long two years ago, but management is making me nervous. What is your time frame, Josh? I would like to know, uh, what was it back then when you got in? For, for Neo and what is it now? And do you have fundamental things built in? Like for example, I know I've talked about profitability is a big deal. It's the second of three major growth phases for me, um, but I, I will definitely wait for at least the three major growth phases that I've identified before you know I even consider um, writing this thing off as a bust. Um, so, I mean, it's, I've still got years built out and structured into this thing, but that's me. Uh, so I'm always curious to hear from others. So talk to me, let me know. Neo San Francisco says, everybody's a predictor. Uh, have your own investment goals and leave investor place out of it. Yeah, I am a big fan of people investing their own time, their own money, doing their own research, all that. I'm a fan. And kind of the goal or ideal thing is that everybody doesn't think the same. So that's part of what makes it fun. Andrew Hubbard says, Short-term players don't bother here. Long-term, the end of 2025, this has to be a great bet for massive profit. So it went up to $66 for a short time before dropping off. I was not a millionaire then, but if it goes back to 65 or 66 because of all the shares I'm buying, while it's so low, I would become easily a millionaire. So imagine it hits 100. Neo has been putting all the jigsaw pieces on the table, and now it's just putting the picture together. Some of us see the picture already, and the slower people will see it as more pieces are in, pay, in a place. Crucial to see the picture early. That is a, that's a really good comment, Andrew. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't even want to say anything. I just want to say thanks. because it Because perspective is tough, right? And having the lens and recognizing and seeing even what the shift can mean 
and where the price fluctuations can can change things. <clears throat> and look, does Neo get profitable? What if they don't? Well, then we're probably in trouble. If they get profitable, what happens? Because they did run to 60 plus dollars and they were not close to profitable yet. So it's just a, it's an interesting play for sure. Peter Barker says at first, when it went to the moon, I thought quick bucks, but didn't act accordingly and ended up bag holding. So I DCA to lower my average from 39 to 18. Now have twice the stock at a better price and continue to DCA when funds available. I'm curious, Peter, I would love to know your opinion. Do you think we see all time highs for Neo again? And if so, what year do you think we might see it? Or what year range, if you want to give a couple years? I'm just curious. I'd like to know your thoughts. Appreciate it. Fill Your Head Sway says, 10 years holding great cars. That's long-term. 10 years is long-term. That even encompasses the CEO's time frame of 2030, if you're 10 years from now. <laughs> Stefan says, I buy the company, not the stock. Oh, I love that. That's good. Gucci. Gucci, and there is a big difference. But if if people want to look at the stock, that's why I led with the stock stuff at the beginning of this video. Um, and I'm going to end with Satoshi because that one time I missed your comment. So even though this is from another video, I'm going to I'm going to read it and reply. Satoshi, appreciate you. Uh, BYD dominates the market more than Tesla. Hybrids dominate the overall market over pure EVs. So it's really more like Xpeng or Xiaopeng, Tesla, Neo versus BYD, Li Auto versus Ice. Yeah, isn't it interesting when you start like separating the segments and then you're like, wait a minute, there's a lot more going on and there are a lot more pieces. And the Chinese market is huge. That auto market is so much bigger than I ever thought it was. Uh, once I started digging in, I'm like, holy cow, wow. And and it just made me more bullish on Neo because they didn't have to come to the US and, and do great. I do think they're going to be well received when they get here. But that Chinese market is massive it is huge and because we haven't seen the premium ev stuff really pivot yet it is still early enough that neo can still dominate that segment in that space although the delivery and production ramp has been slower than i thought it would be and hoped it would be and a lot of people are in the same boat but yet it's still early let's see what happens long term with Neo on the Neo train short term, I'm losing my voice and it is coming up on 3 a.m. So I'm going to get this thing up and hopefully prep so I can drop it in the morning. And then uh, I'll probably come back with a delivery number video once we get those numbers. Hopefully my voice will not be shot so I can do that. Uh, let me wrap it. And sorry if I was a little you know, out of it being so tired, but I really wanted to get this video done. I was behind on comments and wanted to uh, catch up on those. Uh, it's been a crazy wild journey from a few years ago and not even have an internet. I didn't even know you could do this on YouTube and I would have told you you're crazy if you said I could do this, but here I am. And, and it's, a, it's just a thank you to the people who, who come through and do this. And that's why I take the time and enjoy responding, uh, and, and investing some of my time back. I appreciate it. Um, also if you're a real estate investor, check out my new channel. It's awesome. Game changer, real estate. I'm seeing the shift. I'm talking about it. Real estate videos. I'm trying to do quick hitters, three minute, roughly videos where I talk commercial deals, residential deals or concepts. It's fun. I'm going to keep having fun with it once my voice gets all the way back. Anyway, let me wrap this. I'll see y'all again real soon. Thanks. Take it easy, y'all.